Hello, and welcome to the E-Town Abroad podcast. My name is Samantha Seeley, and I'm the Student Outreach Coordinator for the Elizabethtown College Study Abroad Office, and I studied abroad for a full year in Austria and Germany. Today, I'll be talking with German and computer science major Niklas Biriel. Niklas is actually a good friend of mine, and our time studying abroad in Marburg, Germany overlapped. I'm really excited to talk with them about their experiences in Austria and Germany, and to kind of get their perspective on some of the things we both went through. So today we've got a very special guest, a personal friend of mine, Niklas Spiria. Hello, Niklas. Good morning. To start off this interview, I'd like you to introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Niklas. I study German and computer science. I studied abroad uh, one semester in the, with the BCA Marburg program, which is two months in Vienna and then four months in Marburg, Germany. Did you always want to study abroad? Oh yeah, I've for years I've been uh, dreaming about living in Europe and permanently moving to Europe after graduation, and it was a great test run of can I actually live in Europe? Was part of that because of your parents being from Europe? In part, yes, but also uh, I seem to get along better with a lot of social norms in Europe than I do in the United States. What makes you feel more comfortable in Europe than in the US? The philosophy or the lifestyle in Europe is a lot more compatible with me. So um, where I live in the US and I've, I've moved around the US, I've lived in four different places and every time you had to take, you had to drive for at least five minutes in a car to get everywhere, uh, to get anywhere. Uh, meanwhile, in Mobwig, I literally just walked everywhere. It's not the most walkable place, given that uh, <laughs> the, I lived the, at the mountain. Top of the hill. <laughs> yes. But I mean, having the option to walk, and I mean, cities here had the option to walk too, but it just feels so much more part of the culture to walk and not drive for the littlest things. And there's amazing public transportation. Uh, I miss that about Marburg. I really do. I mean, it was, it was just like you get, there's a bus probably five minutes from where you are if you want it. And then you can just go anywhere you want it. I definitely miss that too. Yeah. And uh, with the semester ticket, like we could go, I don't know, it was like a two hour train range, basically. Well, one to two hour train range. And that's incredible. Yeah, I think it was pretty much the entire state of Hessen, right? Definitely, yeah. Yeah. What were your feelings when you first got to Europe? Given the fact that I can't sleep on airplanes, tired. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I just feel at home in Europe. Uh, my flight lit. I had a layover in Frankfurt, Germany. So my um, the ritual in my family is as soon as we arrive in Germany, we buy a pretzel. <laughs> so that's what I did. And it just felt like I was in the right place. Can you tell me about one of your happiest moments from when you were abroad? Oh boy. So, I mean, there were definitely relatively speaking to a normal semester, a ton of those. I think some of my favorite memories are just the time I got to spend with friends over there because we were able to socialize so often with each other. And I mean, we did we did weekly Dungeons and Dragons games, which isn't a thing that tends to, that people tend to have time for at college in the US. And that, I mean, that was definitely a high point. Um, and then also because besides my immediate household, my entire family lives in Europe. So I got to see all three of my remaining grandparents uh, for, well, at least a weekend, up to two weekends each. Uh, and my grandpa took me to a 
professional soccer match with my favorite team, which was a definite high point. What was it like getting to like see all of your grandparents and, and really, re I guess, reconnect with family there? Yeah, so I, I haven't, I've never had that opportunity of, oh, let's uh, swing on by the grandparents' house or let's take a weekend trip to the grandparents uh, because, I mean, the nearest grandparent was a seven hour flight. So seeing grandparents was always a big deal. But uh, the, a couple days before Easter, my great aunt uh, texted me on WhatsApp, which if you're going to Europe, make sure to download WhatsApp. That's basically uh, the only way that Germans communicate. But my great aunt texted me like, hey, do you want to uh, spend Easter weekend with us to celebrate? So I managed to, I was able to spend uh, Easter weekend with a bunch of family members on about a week's notice. And on top of that, I, at that same trip, I got to see my great grandfather on one hour's notice, which is just incredible. I, we generally see that great grandfather once every maybe two or three years, he's old enough that he doesn't really leave his house anymore but I was able to see him twice in the month of April. <laughs> wow, that sounds like it was a really good experience then. How was your study abroad experience different from what you expected? I had a lot yeah. more free time than expected actually. The way classes are taught there, it's not well, with the exception of a Russian class I took, every class met once a week for an hour and a half, not two to three times a week. And then homework was, again, outside of that uh, Russian class, almost non-existent. So I ended up having a lot of free time on my hands to do, to spend creatively. Um, I was, <laughs> that was the only time I would, or that was the only time I felt inspired enough to creatively write as far as I can remember. And ex I explored the area and yeah, thrived. <laughs> How do you feel like that class system, like, do you feel like that class, class system was better than like the more Amer like the American style of classes? 100%. <laughs> I would, <laughs> There are so many differences about uh, the university system in Europe that I would fight people over. <laughs> I don't know if you want to keep that, but <laughs> uh, there are so many differences that I would that I would very much recommend be introduced into the U.S. college system, because it while there were times in the semester that were very stressful, like. At the end of the semester when all the essays and exams are due, day, the day-to-day -day college experience there doesn't seem to be stress. It seems to be learning. In the United States, anyone you talk to at any point in the, in the semester is always stressed and stressed so much that they don't have time for social interaction a lot of the time or don't have the focus for social interaction. While over there, you could easily, um, on pretty short notice, meet together with friends and um, yeah, spend the evening playing games or whatever you wanted to you want to do. And besides that, I don't feel like I learned any less because I had class once a week or because of homework. In fact, the environment with less stress made me more enthusiastic about learning and. I remember much more from that Russian class than I do from any of the German classes I took in, I, than any of the German classes I took in Elizabethtown or any other language classes I've ever taken before. That reminds me of one thing I was really curious about. So you started learning German from a very young age, correct? I wouldn't say I started learning German because that didn't officially start until, until college. But uh, German was the, or has been the main language we use at home. We grew up in a household that switches English and German in the middle of the sentence on a daily, on an hourly basis. So, <laughs> yeah. How did that, 
how did you how do you feel that affected your uh, the transition to Germany? Because like was it like I don't know because I I mean I'm mm-hmm. like a native English speaker and so when I went abroad I had been learning German but it was like actually really using it in an immersive environment. How was that different for you? So I've no I know I can use or I knew before that that I could use the German. It's just that my German has always been like that. My German has never been that of a native speaker. My accent is not 100% German. It's very heavily influenced by growing up in the US and my grammar, oh boy, no matter how much I learned the theory in uh, classes in the US, it just didn't stick with me until the language classes in uh, Vienna. My German, I feel like my German hit a peak after those two months in Vienna. It kind of plateaued during the next four months in Germany. And since then it's been going downhill. Yeah, I can definitely relate to to feeling like my German skills are atrophying because I'm not using them nearly often enough. What do you feel most grateful for in your study abroad experience? I mean, the fact that I was able to do it at all. I mean, I know that that's a real privilege, especially now, even more so now, given the situation of no one being able to travel. (laughs) Kind of learning how to socialize uh, I'm, yeah, not the best. I, I'm definitely not the best at making friends <laughs> and also generally not very good at keeping friends. So uh, having that situation where it just felt all, where all of that just felt a bit easier uh, was very helpful. That makes sense. I feel like we had like a lot of, like there were just so many scenarios where it was just like, really easy to get to know people and like yes really easy, like for us to just interact and like hey there's this event going on that for international students you want to go or like mm-hmm. there's this city festival happening and like let's go and see what that's about and and I think that really helped as well and I, I mean the other thing at least from from my perspective was like you know, and maybe for you, this is different, but I know that from my perspective, I often found it easy. It it felt a lot easier in a way to connect with other Americans who were abroad in a way. Um, Yeah, because I mean, it was was kind of like, I mean, for me, it was like, oh, this person's from my back, like the same background as me. And like, we both decided to come here, which, and like sometimes when you're in like a really different, uh, situation it's like okay well like this person we already have more of like the base level of like background and like understandings and and you know if I make a joke about this thing this person's gonna get it whereas if I make the same joke to someone who lived in Germany their whole lives it might not quite land because there's there's that sort of cultural differences yeah exactly it's exploring a new experience with people who have similar backgrounds even though also completely different (laughs) yeah but like the similarities are there and the differences are as much as the different areas of the U.S. are all different there is a semblance of an underlying American culture that everyone understands and that's different than it's different to compare different U.S. cultures than comparing Germany with the Netherlands with Russia with the US. Mhm. Yeah, it's just it's it's really interesting how how that kind of affected the way that that friendships sort of were able to happen over there in a different way. And mm. it was I mean it was also interesting connecting like with people from Germany or people from other areas around the world who I wouldn't like I wouldn't have necessarily met people from like all of these different countries in the US like I probably wouldn't have and it was incredible to be able to meet people from so many different countries and like like not just Germany not just Austria but also all around yeah I mean the language classes in Vienna did a great job of that 
I mean, in my language course, uh, there were people from countries that I've never known anyone from before and so many different walks of life. And like the person who sat next to me had three young children and was born in, um, and was born in Syria. Like that's not someone that I'd meet in the United States in my normal life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, I remember that range too. when when I was in Vienna, cause I was there in Vienna at a different time than you were. And I remember in my class, there were, I think the youngest student in our class was 14 years old. And then the oldest student was like 32. And it's just this huge range of people. And we're, you know, we're all grouped by language level. And it, it was really interesting getting to like having that wide a group in like one single classroom all there to kind of learn a language and, and help each other out. And learning German with German as the reference language and not English as the reference language. Yes. Also, I learned much more effectively in that system than I did in the US. Right? Oh, absolutely. The system. Yeah, absolutely. That was, I mean, it forces you to, to learn the language, right? Like yeah. <laughs> if you want, <laughs> you know, everyone, there's only one language that people can speak in that room together and have everyone else understand and that language when that language is German. Well, you get better at German. You have to use it. Yeah. I'd be really curious to, uh, to figure out how that worked in the, uh, in the very beginning levels of that language course, but I think there was one in my, or one of the Americans in my travel group that did that and it seemed to work well for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how it, I'm sure it's a lot more difficult and like it, I think it also probably affects like what conversations you're having in the classroom. I mean, like I remember like us, my, like my class we were talking, like we talked about cars and geography and and like cultural differences. And then we started, you know, as the class advanced, it was, you know, talking more about poetry or um, more complex topics or, you know, careers and things like that. Whereas um, in earlier language courses, it might, or, you know, it might be different with a different sort of vocabulary use. But I mean, even then, I think that they kind of had like a focus on getting the language learners to a point where they could really involve themselves in the world around them and you know like go to a restaurant and order a meal or like find where they need which train they needed to take and and things like that um i found the i i that's one thing i loved about the vienna course was really how practical the language we were learning was yeah definitely i mean i was in the c1 course so it's, I think it's, they sometimes offer say it's why, but usually not according to our teacher. And I mean, that's the level that our language group had a lot of people who were dent or had a couple of people who were like a dentist or a doctor who need the C1 certificate to be able to practice their profession. So that class is less so like day-to-day -day practical. I mean, you don't need to understand climate change in words that I wouldn't even be able to talk about in English. But it's, yeah, even, even though it isn't more super practical, it definitely felt more practical. Yeah, I definitely. Probably a big part of that is that you're learning it in a place where you're gonna use it, not Language classes in the US feel very theoretical a lot of the time, but the fact that you're living in Austria or later in Germany, practice it, learning the language that you're then gonna use in the outside world makes it feel real, like something that it's less of a chore to learn it. And it also sticks better too, just cause yeah. you leave class and you're still using the language, whereas in the states, you leave class and you're back to you're back to English. Yeah, you're not going to need to know the difference between a. Uh, you're not going to need to know what a Nebensatz is when you're talking uh, to your friends in the, uh, about which dance you're going to partake in. But you do need to know what a Nebensatz is if you're 
talking to a professor about a class you're taking and, <laughs> uh, and went to sound like a human being who speaks German. <laughs> <laughs> that might not be the best phrasing. Uh, <laughs> I understand what you mean, at least. Yeah, that was one thing that was like, for me, especially not just in, in language classes, but like interacting with other people in the dorm was like, like, I want to sound natural. I want to be able to communicate mm. and, and sound like I'm speaking German and sound like, <laughs> like I know how to speak German. Yeah, I mean, the, the German language classes I'm taking in E-Town, it's kind of, you learn this concept and then you don't think about it until generally two to three days later when you have the next class period. Mm -hmm. In Germany, you learn a language concept and then later that day you're standing at, in, uh, at a street food stand ordering thinking, hmm, this, this grammar might actually be applicable here. Wow, that's amazing. Or sitting in your uh, group meetings where people use the most official uh, language available to Germans uh, that doesn't even make, that often doesn't even make sense to German speakers who grew up in Germany and lived their entire life there. And you're listening and you're like, wait, didn't I just learn this about this grammar in class today? Wow, that's pretty cool. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> what advice do you have for people going abroad, whether that's to Germany or Austria or even just like any other abroad program where they're being immersed in the language? Focus on having a good time and learning practically, not learning theoretical knowledge. If you don't get the A that semester, it's perfectly fine. That's, no one's going to notice that. Instead, spend your time learning German, uh, having, having fun with the classes, if your schedule allows that. Do something like take Russian or take Spanish, something that you might not have. I mean, Spanish, you do have the option, but you don't have the option to learn Russian when you're in Elizabethtown. And take, take advantage of that semester ticket. Uh, that is absolutely incredible, but also exploring exploring Mabog itself is just as fun. You never know what you're going to run into randomly on the street. And even though you're going to have bad experiences there, it's just a fact of life. Uh, I can't imagine anyone who goes six months feeling perfectly happy every moment of every day of that time. But no matter how bad the bad times are, you're going to remember the good times. Uh, it sucks in the moment to have that bad time, but it's, it's the good times that I remember. I don't remember crying on my way back from the uh, city bureau because I didn't have the right paperwork to register my address. I mean, I do remember it, but it's not the focus of my memories. Yeah. For my final question, I like to, to ask everyone this um, when I remember. Um, um, I, like to, I like to ask the guests on the show, how would you describe study abroad or your study abroad experience in five words? <laughs> Word limits are hard. Die beste Monate to meiner Uni Zeit. <laughs> so, for all of our non German <laughs> speakers out there, they said the best months of my university time. My translation, think, all right there, friend? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. That's better than okay. what I was coming up with. <laughs> I just think it's more than sure. five in English, but it's five in German. Just take so, our word for it. It counts. It counts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I me. really appreciate it. And I always love talking to you. Same. Subscribe to the Etown Abroad podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and follow us on Instagram at Etown Abroad. For more information about our study abroad programs, visit etown.edu. 
The music for our show was composed by Elizabeth Baker and Avery Faust, and this episode was produced by Samantha Seeley. Thanks for listening.